Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And uh, tonight on the show, we're going to be taking a look at everyone's pockets, seeing what you're what you're carrying today. And uh, I have an unboxing. I've never done a live unboxing, but uh, uh, I just got off an eight, uh, what was a 12 hour workday. And I just came off a one and a half hour live show elsewhere, but it wasn't me on camera. It was me doing what Jim's doing. And so uh, I'm, uh, I'm on a roll. Let's just say that. Hey, Michael, good to have you, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Rox, good to have you too. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be unboxing something. I got home and this thing that I ordered, which happens to have an edge, uh, was here. And I figured, you know, why scramble and, and, uh, open it up and, and take a look at it uh, 20 minutes before I'm actually going to, you know, come on here. So, Jock, good to have you, sir. Dude, evening, fellow junkies. Yes, indeed. Monster, as always, a pleasure. Good to have you here. Uh, Michael, good evening, Bob and Jim. Why, thank you, sir. Thank you. A good evening to you and Monster. All right, guys. So, uh, hey, Manny, good to have you here. Grab yourself a beer. Caleb, nice to have you. Howdy. 86 Recon, great to have you. Hello, fellow junkie, indeed. Nick EDCNs, eh, knife lads. Oh, hey, knife lads, <laughs> good to have you. And Wallaby, good to have you back here, sir. Presumably, us, uh, sir. Not too, not too many, uh, well, may maybe, the, maybe the audience of uh, women is growing here, maybe. Uh, I know my daughter watches occasionally. G-Man, how's it going? Well, it's going great here. I'm uh, I'm I'm happy to be home. I'm happy to be out of my work clothes. I'm happy to be here hanging out with you. I've been wanting to talk knives all day with people, and uh, you know, I I understand that it's you know you got to save those relationships, and you need to save those relationships too. So let us know what you think by calling the listener line. Call that listener line and unburden yourself. Let us know what you think. Uh, you know, tell us what's your favorite knife. Who's your favorite designer? What you're carrying? What you're looking forward to? Maybe you have a dumb knife story that you have to get off your your chest. I have plenty, uh, or in my cases, like knives I have to pull out of my legs, that kind of thing. Um, or maybe you have a comment about one of the interviews we do here. Uh, call us. Leave a message on the listener line. Uh, I, I got to be honest, and I, and I think this is a small enough group. I can say we've had one guy who crank called twice and they were they were mundane and and it it was kind of funny it reminded me of my crank call days i gotta say very innocent alex nice to have you here sir as always uh don't worry i'm getting those out to you very soon very soon sir i swear me with knives hello knife junkie it's good to see you me my wife is watching <laughs> happily ish all right well Jock is 100% justified in every one of his knife purchases. I will tell you that. Um, I, I know that for a fact. So Jock's a good man. Hey, Bob from Colorado. It's Barry Levitt. Good to have you, Barry. Always a pleasure. It's a familiar name. I love to see these. David, how you doing? Hello, knife people. David had a, has, has had some questions. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, You've been asking about uh, tactical folding knives and things to carry for self-defense, and 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 my opinions, and uh, you know they are ever evolving. Um, hey, Robin, good to have you here. Uh, you know, sometimes it'd be nice to to carry this for self-defense, but uh, you know you can't do that. But sometimes that's in my my time frame. Take your time, Bob. Oof, careful, careful. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, I mean, I will. I will take my time. Barry says, out of curiosity, did you get the... No, 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 not yet. I haven't, uh, but I... Uh, it got... Oh, all, the, all my stuff. It got to the notebook that, that sits on my desk. So it will be gotten. And I saw... Uh, it's actually in my... Um, in my on deck on Amazon, I can't decide on the color. They're mostly clear with the colored caps and they're only like 30 bucks. So I'm, I'm very into it. Hey, Plains Crafter. Good to have you here. I, I will be uh, getting that. I need a non cartridge fountain pen uh, that works. Uh, and I, I think all of my old ones there, they all need a little bit of, uh, all need a little bit of sprucing up. So anyway, let's get to that pocket check. All right. So today I was carrying uh, in honor of a of an idea Jim and I had the other day for a uh, for an, an upcoming um, town hall, I carried this with the knife junkie logo emblazoned on it or engraved in it, and uh, 
big, big, big fan of this knife. Big fan of Spartan Blades. Big fan of uh, Curtis Iovito and Bill Harsey, who designed this. And uh, yeah. So, well, anyway, we're, we're thinking about a town hall, a combination of people. And I think I came up with a nuclear combination of people. Now, uh, I'm since I had the cat's out of the bag, we're doing a, a knife unboxing. I'm going to move that out of the way of the knife cam for the moment and, uh, and put that down. The other thing I was carrying today, now, I, I, I did not carry a slip joint, flashlight, or pen today. I had my, my ever faithful um, safari. Lammy. And then I carried my new Pilar 3 today. And what great action. And today was a very nerve wracking day halfway through the, well, actually, well, two and a half hours before it was time to go live on the show I was doing, uh, I lost half of my crew. So uh, I was fidgeting and we, we were we got a new, hey, what's up, Dave? Good to have you here, sir. I like that Karambit video. I haven't gotten nearly all the way through it, but I really like that video so far. Monster says, nice, love, Spartan. Yep, yep, me too. And I'm loving this uh, Pilar 3. The action on it is great. And for a small three-inch blade, it's fall shutty and very, very smooth. Now, I'm doing this all with my left hand. Uh, today, while I was pacing around, I was doing it with my right hand. And uh, uh, I generally don't have this out or either, you know, any of my knives out and fidgeting at work if people are around. But uh, if they happen upon me, it's all good. They're used to me at this point. I've, I've trained them over 10 years, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's what I was carrying. What were you carrying today? Um, is it a labor for you? Do you, do you stand over the old uh, knife cabinet and peruse and wonder what, what's going to go with these pants? I carried the Harns Assassin and a bug out. Assassin, that's a subtle name. I mean, you know, that's going to go over great with the judge. But Harns, interesting. Is that how you pronounce it? Harns. It must be Harns. Um, they've just kind of popped out into, my, into view for me. I'm not sure. Are they a brand of tool that's been around for a long time and now they're making knives? Someone fill me in on the Harns thing. Me with knives, maybe that's you. Let me know. Uh, bug out is always a great back pocket knife or in the jacket or in the left pocket. Never the right. I was carrying an Emerson TE CQC7 right grind. So that's the uh, tactical elements, the people who brought you the 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 uh, Knight um, MK Ultra that I've been talking about a lot recently. Um, well, they also do uh, Emersons there, special exclusive Emersons, and they do the right hand grind. Okay, so the Emerson knives are they're all chisel edged. And many uh, and and a number of them are chisel ground, where the whole flat of uh, of one side of the blade is flat, and then the other side has the grind on it, and and that is for a number of different cutting reasons and such. Uh, but the point of this is um, that for aesthetics, they set it up with the grind on the on the show side of the knife, but that is really catering to the cutting of left-handed people because. You want the uh, flat, like any chisel, you want that flat uh, presented against the material that you're cutting. And so on the right hand, it's not. So, and, and that's always kind of stuck in my craw just a touch. And actually I asked uh, Ernest Emerson when he was on the show why he did that. And he said, and he said for aesthetics. And I was like, okay, you know, fair enough. Uh, but that tactical elements, um, you know, where they flip it, and put the uh, the flat on the on the left side. That's my long way of saying got to get that. Eighty six Recon says today carrying my new Max Ace Goliath with the blue tie and brown micarta and my Cold Steel eighty ten. That Goliath. Okay, so I saw uh, Kevin Cleary's video on the Goliath, and Kevin Cleary and I have similar taste in folders, and that he likes big big knives too. He likes the overbuilt knives, and he likes the big. And that Max Ace, uh, oh man, it something about it. A little bit in the blade reminded me a little bit of a, a um, like a Shirogorov kind of like a uh, like a straight spined drop point, very subtle but nice looking knife. And and uh, uh, Kevin Cleary had it with the titanium kind of blue titanium bolsters and white G10 handles, and stunning. So I'd love to hear what you think of that knife. Is that a four and a quarter inch? 
I, I think it is. I think it's over a, a four inch knife, which I love. The Wallaby says uh, the Ildris for today, the Eldress for today. So you were carrying the Eldris last week, I believe, right? What color do you have? Uh, I I keep hearing about the Eldris, and I know I know it's way old news, but uh, I think Wallaby. I think this is partially your doing, and someone else uh, who visits regularly was carrying an Eldris recently. Uh, I carried my mini Crooked River. Nice, I love that. That that's a bench made. I regret getting rid of is the large Crooked River uh, as my primary with a ZT zero four fifty in my back pocket and a GEC twenty nine Stockyard Whittler in the slip, uh, uh, in a slip in my front left pocket. Okay. You painted a picture and I love it. I love it. Um, so my question, oh, oh, that says your primary is ZT 0450 in your back pocket. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm picking that up. So you got, you got the, sl I think they're both the same size of blade, right? The mini crooked river. Oh no, that's three and a quarter. So it's larger than the 450, which is three inches. I like that. Okay. So for me, it's, I'm like that also slip joint. Okay. That's a, that's a separate category. That's, that's good. You can never carry two knives of the same brand. I can never carry two knives from the same brand personally. And, uh, not can't, I prefer not to. And, uh, also like, I'm not going to carry two flippers, you know, uh, what kind of an animal do you think I am? Two kind of flippers. I my imagination needs more stoking during the day, so I'll I'll I'll, I'll vary it like you did, and, and that includes size and style. QSP Penguin Blue Jean Micarta. You were carrying that last week, I believe, in the Victorinox Tinker. That's a good. That's a great combination there. The Blue Jean Micarta. That's awesome. Barry Levitt says Spider Comanix Two with C CTS. XHP. I always stumble over that one. And the dragonfly. Very nice. Is it the new dragonfly? Hmm. Uh, curious. Penny Ripple says, hey, Penny, good to have you. Uh, Spider Co. Roadie today. I never hefted, and not, not that that's the right word for roadie because it's so small, but I've never had or held a roadie. And I've always been fascinated by its awkward but useful design. You know, that's, that's Spider Co. Awkward but useful. I think, uh, except when you're looking at a Yojimbo or a Yojumbo, and then you're just looking at, you know, that's pure beauty right there. Uh, received my Pena X series Lannies. Oh, jig titanium. Oh, Manaj. Two days ago. I, you know, me, I love my jigging and I, you know, I love it when they jig titanium and with the full bolster and the whole thing. That sounds awesome, man. Nicely done. Michael says, I had my ZT0562 tie and a Boker Mini Trapper 562. Yeah, I have, uh, that's that's one of my few, it's like my only full uh, carbon fiber scaled knife because uh, I am now disgusted by carbon fiber. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jock says, TRM Adam, nicely done. And Brass Victorinox Excelsior for me. Brass Victorinox Excelsior. What's an Excelsior? Is that uh, is that a single bladed Victorinox? Uh, Boker Mini Kalashnikov, very nice, very nice. I was just playing with the uh, the large Kalashnikov that, or the extra large Kalashnikov that uh, um, Lavender Pants sent my way. Awesome knife, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Robin, how's it going? Chavez Re Redencion from Riot that I just got. What do you think of that knife? I'm the only reason I don't have a Chavez has, has been the clip all along. And then the last time I had this conversation, uh, I can't remember uh, who it was with. I decided it's worth looking past the clip, which I'm sure I would get used to. I'm just not a skull guy, aesthetics wise. Uh, I used to be, and I used to love drawings. I mean, I still love drawing skulls. I mean, they're nice. They're, they're great to draw and stuff, but I don't festoon myself with them. And uh, having one sticking out of my pocket, on a knife has always struck me as uh, attracting a little bit more attention than I prefer. Fox Demios. Oh, so you got it. I know you were, you were, uh, I'm pretty sure you were um, kind of laboring over that decision and the TDI pocket strike TDI. Oh, okay. TDI. So that's the, um, is that K bar, the K bar TDI series pocket strike. Very cool. Hey Manny, the uh, Rex 45 shaman, or shaman and the m4 spider monkey oh with brass 
the M4 Spider Monkey? Is that the one with the brass handle? Spider Monkey is cool. I had the big one, the, the bad monkey, for a while, and I ended up selling it. It it was nice. It was a great knife, uh, uh, but but for the amount of money it cost, I I it I just moved it along. Nice knife though. Uh, Viper Novus and a Rough Rider Canoe. Love me a canoe. I have a Rough Rider Canoe right here, and it's tiny and purple. Now, this is one of those uh, Rough Riders where you really get why it costs 12 bucks. I mean, the, the, uh, this, uh, oh, sorry, I have a knife cam. What am I doing? Uh, the um, purple handle material here it looks like someone, um, you know, created a form and poured some epoxy in it and then just put some sprinkles in it and popped it out and put it on the knife. It's like, it doesn't look like real professional knife covers but that's what you get for 12 bucks or with rough rider for 12 bucks you get some amazing bone handle so it's weird catches catch can if you're gonna buy something purple and sparkly you better expect something like that did my review oh did my review on the goliath yes 4.24 inches oh my god hey dave i'll talk to you offline <laughs> uh hey wallaby Yep, always got it around my neck. Okay, all right. That's kind of like the uh, the diagnostic, the little um, the little bastinelli I always have around my neck, at least when I'm working, and it kind of feels like that. Uh, had a new knife day. Ooh, nice, nicely done, Wolf. Uh, a Vero Axon, so that's Vero Engineering Axon. So good. So I carried that in the Pena Trapper Slippy. Very nice, man. I both of those. I want to speak to both of those guys. Um, I'd love to interview them on the show because they're both doing really interesting things. And, uh, you know, Pena has been on my, on my radar for a long, long time. And then Vero just popped up recently for me. You know, I'm always lagging behind. That's why I talk to you guys. Incognito says, sup guys, excuse me. Have you all heard Lynn Thompson made a new company named never unarmed? Yes. Yes. It's a great website. We, uh, we covered it a little bit. Uh, it's a very promising site because, you know, you go to knife, most knife websites and it's like uh, knives and brands and new and sale and this and that. You go to his and it's like swords, battle axes, bowies, tantos, halberds, uh, you know, um, pole arms. Who, who has a pole arms section? I love that. I mean, yes. So thank you, Incognito Griffin. Uh yeah. Oh, and blow darts. What am I talking about? Silent killing, you know, um, low profile. Just put a little poison on those. So now you see he's got four different darts he sells, you know, little arrowheads, one that looks like a pin, one that, that you like knock. The, the one on the right looks like you like, kind of, you, know, you shoot it at a squirrel's head and knock it out so you can like take it home and interrogate it. I don't know. I don't know why you would do that, but a stun dart. <laughs> it's even called a stun dart. That's the squirrel. That's the one. Oh, but this is very exciting. That's right. Uh, a real, actual, uh, razor sharp clip point um, ballet. They're going to be doing a ballet song, and uh, it was just up on screen, and it looks beautiful. Um, I think, <laughs> and and it has the four and a, the traditional four and a half inch blade, which is cool. The concept copperhead Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive and Tucson Swayback. That Tucson Swayback. Uh, I, I feel like I've just seen uh, on Instagram is beautiful. It's a knockout. I mean, but everything they do is cool. But sometimes for my taste, a little busy. But I, I recognize how gorgeously made and, you know, designed they are. And the concept knives, man. I only have the one, the Pelican. But I've been nuts about this knife. And this is a, only a little three-inch knife. Love to see this in a four-inch, of course, or 3.75. But this is a great little knife. So... Yeah, take it from me. Ron says, uh, just got today Watchman slip joint, sheep's foot blade, wood handles, anchor inlay. Very nice. I, I, I hmm. okay, that sounds awesome. I, I need to, I need to look that up. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I've seen a lot of pictures of them. Is Watchman an iconic brand? And I'm just not quite aware of it, like, uh, like Opinel or Opinel or something like that, or, or, um, uh, Mora, let me know. Uh, me with knives says I'm not 
uh, I'm not sure about Harns. However, I picked the Assassin for 30% off. Pocket Sword theme this week. Yes, yes, I approve. I love, I love the Pocket Sword theme. David says, the Fox Recon I asked you about. Right, bought it in black. One heavy blade, the Recon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I'm glad you got, I, I, yeah, I'm glad you got it because it's definitely cool. And Fox is making some killer knives, like, again, like this knife they produced. And I have something else around here Fox produced, but it evades me. Nathaniel Conway, good to have you here. Hey, Jim. Oh, XM18, three-inch non-flipper. Okay, that's another three-inch knife I'd love to get. An XM18 non-flipper. I think, I think the flipper... Even with my svelte hands, I think uh, the flipper on a three inch with that angle would really bite into my my forefingers, my forefinger. So uh, I think no flipper is not only aesthetically more pleasing, but also uh, ergonomically on the small one. I, I think uh, Tim Kim so. <laughs> Tim Simcoe says, I got my M4 Para 2 Tanto today. Oh, awesome. So uh, so that and a custom Alox VIX. So I'm I'm gonna have a Para 2 uh, Tanto uh, Tanto Tanto coming my way from one of our great viewers. I'm not going to reveal who that is just in case. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it's coming to me for a, sh a short uh, um, break in and fostering period. And, uh, and then I will send it happily along to its forever home. Uh, John Evans says, hey, John, good to have you. Uh, Black AD-15, ooh, and the Kaiser Shard, ooh. Now, Kaiser's had two, yeah, extremes, definitely. They've had two shards, I believe, right? Uh, one of them is recent and designed by uh, Dirk Pinkerton. And then the other one is older and a little bit longer. I think, I think by half an inch and slender, correct me if I'm wrong and all titanium flipper, I think, which one is it? And am I right or wrong? Uh, spider goes Zabo. Oh man. And Hoback, Hoback MK ultra. Okay. So this is the MK ultra. People are starting to, I don't want to say bite because they don't know, they don't know what's going on. But, uh, I was, I was talking on the phone with Bill Harsey the other day. No, it's, uh, he was returning a call. I called him to, to, uh, to, uh, I praise him for how amazing I thought his, his knife was. And he was gracious enough to call me back. And, uh, you know, he, he likes to talk. We had a, we had a great conversation and, uh, where was I going with that? What did he say to me? Jeez, man, long day, long day. And, not a drop to drink. Monster Racing 38 says, everyone, please remember to hit that like button. Man, every week you do that. Thank you. That's like uh that's like a that's like my little uh, my little um uh hype lower third. I appreciate that. Hollywood Tactical, how's it going, man? Uh Spider Co. Watu and Smock. Oh, I know what I was getting at uh, before. Uh it was it was about the Zabo, it was about the names, and he's he said, damn it, I ripped off Les George. With the Talos, you know, when when I made the knife for um, uh, for Spartan Blades, so he came out with, you know, they came out with the new Les George. The it's like the, you know, what I'm talking about. Well, it's called the Talos, and he didn't uh, he didn't know that he was not only stealing the name or or you know using a name that was already used on a knife by another famous knife maker, but it also happened to be the guy that he was uh, working with on this release because they released those two knives simultaneously. So. Funny story, anyway. Um, why, uh, spy, oh, and also that that Spider Co. Zabo, I don't know, or Zabo, Lacey Zabo, I don't know where that went, but it was only out for like a year or maybe two years. And I think it could have been way more successful if they just changed. I know that there was some sort of um, break, if you will. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but there was some sort of break in the, um, why am I using that? in the compression lock that didn't allow you to do this, that it would slow down like right there. And then you had to manually shut it, but it wouldn't, you know, you couldn't fidget with it. And it was because that uh, Zabo model had a big giant uh, curving blade. So I'm, I'm curious if that's, uh, if that's actually a thing on that. Spyderco Watu and Smock, the Watu, that is a cool, that's the little, um, 
uh, hey, man, I'm going <laughs> to, it's good to have both of you uh, or one of you uh, here. I, I have, I'm going to be showing off something later. Hollywood Tactical says, bad news. When I skewered my thumb over Christmas, turns out I stabbed so deep, I severed my tendon. Now it's too late to reattach. Dude. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. And you know what, man? Let let that be a lesson to everyone. And and I'm actually speaking to myself because I, I cut myself pretty deeply. You know, I, I guess less and less frequently, but it happens. And it happens, you know, a couple of times a year. And it's because the knives are usually so sharp, they heal up really quickly. But, uh, man, don't be too macho about it if you cut too deep. I don't know. I'm sorry to hear that. I, and I'm not lecturing you. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling other people, take it seriously, because you don't want you don't want something to happen like that. Sorry to hear that, Hollywood Tactical. I hope it's not on your knife hand. Uh, Mr. Beyond the Beard. Hey, how's it going, sir? Uh, was rocking my bailout, mostly for food prep. And a Tucson 69 as my beater. And a cadet. Excellent. Excellent. I love the cadet. I lost my cadet. Spider, Co I mean, uh, CRKT. Hey, Richard Wynn. Uh, CRKT Coated Day. Very clean. Coated Day. Coated Day. Coated Day. I don't know that. Jared says, I'm heading, uh, heading to order a Knife Junkie shirt right now. Got to have me some of those. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned that. Hang on. Uh, another... another uh, Okay. So the shirt that Jared is referring to is this knife junkie shirt and all sorts of other stuff, mugs and, you know, whatever you want. You know how merchandise works these days. But check out what Jim designed. Don't take dull for an answer. So these are over there too, and they come in black and white. And they're very cool. I just ordered uh, five of each just to give to people. Uh, I'm, uh, so, yeah, they're there, right there, right there on the screen. Uh, so this weekend uh, on Sunday, oh, 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 oh uh, I'll get to that in a second. Damasteel Evo Typhoon finishing my review. So jealous. Mm, not jealous. Not jealous. Just just. Just watching and not envy, just watching and watching wistfully while everyone is is talking about their their new sharp by designs and uh, typhoons and and how awesome they are. And just in um, Alex loaning me his dagger made you know by the same you know made by the same maker Brian they do it's it's an it's an incredible experience. It's an incredible knife, and now seeing these in the hands of of, of people is making me, you know, making me want one. Mr. G in Vermont says, carrying the Elementum today, might want to try the auto. So Vermont's cool with autos. That's cool. I love Vermont. <laughs> That's the, okay, I didn't mean it that way. Professor EDC, how's it going, sir? Bob, Jim, everyone, hope all are doing well. Well, we are doing well, and it's great to have you here, sir. Hope all is well down there with you. A bunch of XM24s came to Blade HQ, but I'm looking for the XM18. Hey, you know, you might want to give an XM24 a chance. Okay, Pinkerton, Tiny Micarta. Cool little knife. I want to get it in yellow and black. I like the yellow and black colorway. And by the way, I hate the term colorway. And I'll say it right here because it's Thursday Night Knives. Um, yeah, colorway. What, what, what colorway did you want on your reverse tanto? Uh, Kaiser Shard can't set. Oh, okay. Little Main Street. That's the little. Uh, uh, um, so you're you got the Kaiser Shard that we were just talking about, also. But the can't set Little Main Street. That's their slip joint, right? Am I right about that? Paul Meyer says, "Good to have you here, Viking. Hope everyone is having a great day. We are having a great day, and uh, I'm glad you're here." Caleb says, yeah, the Zabo action is awful, but the knife is cool as hell. So cool. That blade is amazing. Uh, I, I seem to remember there are there is some hack where you can get the action to work the way you want it. But uh, I, I, I don't know. You'd have to do some YouTube research. James Curlin, pleasure to have you here, sir. GEC number 78, two blade and stock PM2. Hey, man, nothing wrong with a stock PM2. 
That's what my PM2 is. And, you know, with all these super steels and all these different colorways out there, to have a run-of-the-mill stock PM2 shows good character. I appreciate it. Alex, I carry my Ingress today along with the Evo Typhoon. Love the Ingress. I Yes. And it's just out of reach. It's funny because before we start, I'm always like, what should I have? What, what might I need? And, of course, uh, anyway, great knife. I hope someday he has a chance to mass market that knife because it's worth it. Paul Meyer says at Thursday Night Knives, your thoughts on the new arcane design knife dropping tomorrow. If it's the dagger you're talking about, I'm over the moon about it. Uh, and if not, I'm, I'm not sure. But I do know that I really like arcane designs, uh, the ones that I've seen so far. And that dagger, like, uh, you know, number of people have gotten their hands on those and done videos. I think uh, Jim Skelton and uh, uh, Metal, I think. I'm not sure. Dave says, rocking my concept prickle today, designed by Max Chachuk. Ch Chachuk. That's what I would say, Chachuk. Monster Racing. Uh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Can you go back, uh, Jim, just to Dave's comment? Rock of my cancer. Prickle. Uh, remind me of what a prickle is. That's a weird, that's kind of a weird name, prickle. But uh, I, I, I'm really digging the cancer up, so I want to know which one that is. Very sharp, pun intended, referring to the shirts. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What about, what about that, huh? Don't worry. She's still here. She's just right there. You can see the frame. Uh, J Ryan Obi says carried a giant mouse ace grand nice in natural micarta even nicer and a GEC 15 green micarta I have a GEC 15 green micarta cap lifter with the oh, nice uh, worked with a number 15 and a number 11 scalpel 11 Ooh, what's that number 11 hmm that's, I don't think I know what a number 11 GEC looks like. So, ooh, scalpel. That, I like that. Uh, the concept, or concept, Little Mini Street, uh, Little Main Street is pretty much the same as the Kaiser Shard. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. The Kaiser Shard is a little better than the Main Street. Interesting. So, I'm, uh, I'm curious because now that I, I have the Pelican and I'm, now I want a Zabo. Yeah. Uh, now that I have the Pelican and uh, I've been, you know, very, very happy with it, I've been curious. I, I haven't had a Kaiser in a while. I'm curious how this stacks up to the Kaisers. And and I'm wondering if Jared thinks that uh, that all Kaisers are a little bit better than all um, concepts or you know, or if it's just a matter of his examples, the concept prickle is a new long point tanto design. Okay. Very slender black blade, green G10, green G10 did a review a few days ago. So you can see it in action. I don't remember seeing that. Well, I will definitely check that out, sir. I don't remember seeing that. Oh, I, and you, uh, you solve the riddle of the, uh, What's the other one? What the, last Thursday night knives? You were carrying a uh, 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 oh, it, has, it has a funny name, and and then you put up a video, and it was great. Uh, Got to go feed the family and make dinner. All right, Alex, it's been great having you, man. Have a great night, everyone. Love you, Bob. I love you too, Alex. We love you here at the Knife Junkie. All right, man, feed those people. Feed those people. Give them love. Uh, the, uh, uh, so Ryan is saying uh, the number eleven is a surgery scalpel. I'm a surgeon. It's a tiny little warny, basically. Very nice. What do you do surgery on? Are you a, a is there such thing as a general surgeon? I don't maybe probably not. Probably not. You probably want to specialize in that line of work. Let us know. Uh, my dad uh, was a radiologist. He is happily retired, though wasn't happily at first. Neves knives. Jared says, no, con no, concept is amazing knives. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm reading like a total lunatic tonight, but I'm, I'm a little fried. Um, no, concept has amazing knives. I wouldn't say either is better. It just depends on the knife. Yeah, I got you. And, and then I'd go even further. It just depends on the actual specimen in hand. Sometimes, sometimes things, you know, sometimes the guy gets a phone call or a text when he's at the tip of your blade and goes, huh? And it's just a little bit off, but it's not enough to not send it out, you know? 
Paul Meyer says, my pocket check is Medford Proxima and the stealth. Very cool. I, I love the, wait, what's, is it the Nosferatu? The, the Nosferatu is just so cool. That diamond, it's almost like an elongated diamond shape, the whole thing. General, yeah, robotic and laparoscopic. Laparoscopic. I've never actually seen that word spelled out. That's pretty cool. General, yeah. Okay, okay. Wow. Man, that's got to be interesting because I bet it's a lot of uh, programming and then all, or not programming, but knowing how to, knowing how to work some very, very specialized computer stuff, but also a lot of dexterity, you know, they don't, they don't just hire surgeons cause they're good with computer games, you know? All right. Computer games. I sound like an old man. Oh, that's right. I am. You know what? I, I, I think I've been going on too long and I think I want to get to this unboxing. Uh, but also before I do, you know, I gotta, I gotta ask you, I put this out there earlier because um i'm curious what people have to recommend to non-knife people um and uh i i i personally have given i i've turned non-knife people into knife people around my office and uh, one of them a, a good friend of mine at my office always kind of nah, he didn't make fun of me for carrying a knife but he was always like oh yeah bob so prepared you know ready for the apocalypse yeah you know, why don't you carry a knife, man? Nah, I don't need that big, heavy thing banging around in my pocket. And then I ended up giving him a, a, a an Ozark Trail, a really nice, you know, $5 Ozark Trail. And they are, you know, it was a decent knife, plastic handles. It was light, you know, but sharp and, you know, reasonably, so he carries it all the time. And so that uh, a couple of weeks back, I did a video called The Shame is Real because I was on a lunch break and, and I had to get out of the office and I found myself in the parking lot at Walmart opening up uh, a, an Ozark trail knife that I knew I didn't need. And it was like, it was like waking up in the, you know, okay. It was like waking up on a park bench and being like, Oh, you know, what, what am I doing here? And uh, so I ended up giving that knife to him after I made the video. I, feel, I was like, okay, all right. So this is, I'm basically paying five bucks or four bucks to get a video of a new knife. And so here it is. And I, and I did that. And then I went back to the office after shooting it and gave it right to my friend. And he's like, I already have a knife. Why do I need two knives? And I looked at him, I'm like, and he's like, Oh yeah. Okay, cool. And I've, he's been carrying that new one, the blue. It looks like a, it looks like their version of, um, of a, of a Kershaw leak kind of. And speaking of Kershaw, <laughs> uh, Ken Onion is coming this weekend to the Knife Junkie podcast. I started to say this like 15 minutes ago, um, but he will be coming. Uh, yeah, it, it's an interview with him <laughs> this Sunday. Man, it was it was really cool to talk to him. I mean, he really is Mr. You know, modern folding blade pioneer. He is definitely, uh, you know, a, 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 a what do you call it wealth of knowledge and experience and and it was just great to talk to him from his beautiful you know place in hawaii it was like talking uh when, when i when i spoke with um uh, ed cope it's the same thing he's in hawaii and we would be interrupted every once in a while by the screech of some bird of paradise type thing and so cool and uh before we started rolling he's like oh let me let me show you my office and he was uh you know, he's in his knife making studio and it opened up onto this like m mountain in Hawaii and he just kind of panned around. And I was like, oh, my God, sitting here right outside, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not I wasn't outside, but it was snowing outside. Cody says, I just received my first skiff yesterday. The drifter is amazing. First of all, good to have you here, Cody. Second of all, man, skiff. Wow. Drifter. Uh, those two guys, I mean, they're, they're pretty amazing and uh, they're really interesting to talk to because, uh, you know, father, son, and just contrast, contrast, contrast between the two of those people and just making it work and coming out with these incredible knives. I've never, I've never had one in my hand, but I will some, at some point they, for the heavily sculpted milled decorative luxury knives, man they they do it they do it for me robin says uh i also uh, so i have a concept shard okay yeah I, I need to get one of those little suckers i don't care which one 
I just like uh, I like Dirk Pinkerton's designs. I like Warren Cliffs, and I've been into little knives recently. Hollywood Tactical says cheap spring assisted knife because they're gonna lose it. Yep, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, like I just did with my friend non knife. I give Civivis or old beaters I have lay, laying around. That's a good. That's a good one. A Civivi is a good idea because you know it's uh it's a you know it's a great knife quality wise it's going to be an interesting knife and and you know people are interested in cool things and cool design and chances are it comes in a variety of colors and even probably damascus steel so you can add some razzle dazzle to it and you know make it look less threatening oh a yellow knife you know oh oh blue knife i love blue you know it's not it's less like murdery uh, I always give quality flippers to newbies. Easy to deploy, and they love fast opening. Amazing $40 to $50 knives from certain companies. Yes, yes. I find that the real learning curve with flippers are that they're usually, um, you know, liner locks or or um, frame locks. So just teaching the one-hand frame lock uh, closing is, is a, a little bit, takes a little bit. But once people have them in their pocket and they actually use them and they need to close them, that's that's when that learning happens. Wallaby says I'd probably show them a Rockstead, but not tell them the price. Oh yeah, yeah, Rocksteads are so incredible. Budget, mid, high, Ortis, PM, Waypoint. Now I have to admit I can't I can't conjure up the Ortis in my mind, but PM two and Waypoint, Michael, leads me to believe you're one class act because those would actually be very, very, very good because they're really esteemed, very well made, useful, but they're not like overly uh, anything. They're not overly anything. They're not overly designy. They're not overly uh, um, tactical looking, but they're, you know, top of their top of their tier. So left to EDC slip joint for sure. I always give a Swiss army knife or something like that. You would be surprised at how many people cannot operate a lock. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I was getting, getting to. I have recommended the rat two to a few friends. They all know, uh, they all know do searches for not. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, ladybug for girls in my life. Yeah. Ladybug's a great knife. My, my wife carries a, um, quite often she carries a Kershaw leak or she, she likes the, uh, the Kershaw. What's the little Sinkovich Kershaw that they ended up making the larger ZT out of. Damn it. Can't think of what it's called injection i think or something like that uh would you show an xl cold steel would i show an xl cold they're they're actually over there um so here I'll, I'll give you a bit of eye candy and i'll get one then i'm gonna open up this box but here as a as a little hint as to what might be in this box i'm gonna put this here all right give me two shakes All right, I just grabbed a random three. It just so happens that uh, two of them are Chris's. So I'll show you these, and then I'm I'm unboxing this knife. It's been it's been it's been what's the word? Mocking me. It's been sitting there mocking me for minutes, minutes and minutes. There there needs to be a word for ten minutes, like there's a word for ten years, decade, for tens of minutes. It's been mocking me. So here's the uh, here's the tie light. The beautiful signature series tie light Chris. Lovely knife. Useful. <laughs> Useful if you need to run someone through for sure. And if you need to take a swipe at someone, this this would still be pretty nasty. Uh, do any of you know Matthew Cuthbertson, Culbertson, I think, on uh, YouTube? I've been following him for years and he went inactive for a while and now he comes back with some really quick uh, videos, but he does cool mods on his XL uh, um, uh, cold steels. He'll do, um, he just does different serration patterns and then tests them against pieces of meat. Uh, this is uh, a one that I've found SRM is a good starter. 
that's a great that's a great idea. The one I just did recently was would be excellent for that. This is one that I, I've discovered a lot of people covet because I've had a lot of offers to buy this and it's Tanto Brother. But this is the five and a half inch XL um, Recon 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 One <laughs> in uh, in Bowie in Bowie style. Let's see. You can really see the difference in in. It's not that much, but still, you can see the difference in that blade. And then uh, and then my my Chris, I have a, a whole drawer full of big cold steels because I've been collecting them for a long time. But I didn't want to, you know, jump off screen and curate and labor over what to show you. So, yep, I love the Chris. I do recommend it. I want to check out the uh, XL drop point. I really like the look of that blade. It reminds me of the Hunter and... Um, you know, I just, I really like the look of that. So, okay. I've indulged your need for large cold steel viewing. I hope you appreciate it because it was, it was tough to do because you know how much I hate these things. Cody, yes, my brother loves his bird, Spyderco Raven 2. Oh, yeah, I heard the 2 was a vast improvement uh, I gave him. He does the heck out of it, but CTX BD1 sharpens quickly. A great user knife. I have not had BD1. I flirted with it for a while because I, I always wanted the blue translucent um, um, Mannix. Never got it. Hey, seems logical. Good to have you here. I'd probably show them a Rockstead after. Yeah, after. Yeah, exactly. It, it is a it is a photogenic knife. And I, yeah. Night, night, night. Oh, oh, OK, Jock, you got to come back to about 47 minutes in and check out what I'm unboxing because. It's going to be cool. I'm going to do that right now. All right, people. I've waited long enough. I will use I will use this. Kara has gotten four or five people at work into knives now. Obviously, I'm missing four or five knives. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm going to use this. This is a small bush sax by Bark River Knives. And oh, let's see. The literature. <gasps> what do you know? It's a park river. Okay. All right. It's a bark river knife. This, by the way, is a sheath I made. So if you're wondering, they don't ship with that. All right. Ooh, nice, beautiful leather sheath. This better be the two. This is the two. All right. Okay. All right. I do love this kind of presentation. I like unwrapping. <laughs> Black stacked leather handle. This is the Boone 2. Do not put in dishwasher. Jeez, man. It's too bad they have to put that on there. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so this is in CPM 3V. And let me explain this purchase. This is one of those things that, like, I'm, I'm very glad. I'm very happy that I got on and did the early, what do you call it, um, the pre-order on this. I'm not much of a pre-order guy, but when I went on the pre-order, I was, it was, in the, it was in the summer, and I had just gotten the, uh, the V44 Bowie and I, oh, excuse me, and I had just gotten the uh, the Shining Mountain Bowie and I, I was really into this Bowie shape, but I wanted something smaller and uh, something more, something that reminded me of some, I don't know, I just wanted another, another Bowie, but something smaller and closer to the kind of knives that um, hunters used to carry in the United States and I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain, but I wanted just this. And then my interests uh, moved back over to um, slip joints, and I was obsessing over slip joints for a while. And then now it's shifted back into tactical stuff. And and uh, so uh, I'm really glad I put myself on this list because otherwise, right now, I probably would have passed this up. 
I actually am wanting to get a a, a table, a new table, because as you can see, if I use my hands too much, and I'm Italian, I, I talk with my hands a lot, it, it, it does this. And uh, for the cost of this, I could have gotten a new table. But okay, this it's for you. I got this for you so that I could show the world the boon too. And uh, so, so really, it's a very generous thing I did in, <laughs> in buying this knife for myself. Okay, so the boon too. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very psyched to have this thing. Um, yeah, I will have to examine it more thoroughly, but it looks like three eighths of an inch thick. Um, you've got aluminum bolsters, spacers, nice uh, fuller. Of course, um, it's what do you call it? Convex ground. And ah, thank you, Michael. And this black antique stack leather handle. I actually, I think it's just black stacked leather handle. Ah, I'm very, I'm psyched about that. Cool. Well, I'm glad you could all share in this journey with me uh, through unboxing this knife. Okay. So I'm going to get this big giant V44 out of the way because I want to show off uh, while we have Jared here, I want to show off the work he did for me. I sent him two knives. Um, both of them were pretty sharp, you know, but both were in need of tip repair. And one of them, I just wanted mirror sharp and he, and he obliged. Uh, most non-knife people I know pick a three inch drop point in their budget. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the, that's, that's kind of the, uh, generic kind of standard. Is the Recon One XL discontinued? I'd never see it. Yeah, I've I, I've heard that that was one of those one of those things that they just didn't have capacity for and couldn't keep them in stock. So yeah, I, th I think for now they are. Um, okay, so first I'll show you this, and and actually um, Jared did a video on this. The sound of an unboxing is giving me the itch. Yeah, all the paper crinkling, the sound of cardboard rubbing against cardboard. Okay, so. Maybe you remember this knife. Uh, this was this is my 20 CV carbon fiber um, Yojimbo 2. This was an exclusive. I can't remember where, though. DLT, maybe, or GP knives. I just can't remember. But, um, of course, I, I dropped it on ceramic tiles like that. And it chipped off a piece like this and now I'm exaggerating it wasn't this bad but it was a piece like that which I <laughs> knew that I wasn't going to be able to sharpen out so I made a made it a new bevel and kind of turned it into a little tanto surface there and uh it was pretty bush league but it worked for a while and plus it made me less uh precious with the knife itself I spent a you know I can get precious with knives. Let me just put it that way. So, so busting the tip, uh, you know, kind of opened me up to using it. And so I used it a lot because the, what the hell, why not? The tip is busted. And, uh, I finally decided it was time to send it to Jared and by hand, he removed enough metal by hand, perfectly straight, incredibly sharp and totally fixed that point. He did. He did an amazing job. So he's, what else did he sharpen for me? Um, uh, um, oh, uh, my Warncliffe, uh, <laughs> my Warncliffe hinderer that I chipped the tip of also. And he did the same thing with that. But I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot to remove a, 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 enough 20 CV to sharpen out the tip. And still he didn't make the blade look funky. And it, it, that's a lot of, I don't know, that's a lot of focused work and I'm really impressed. He does all this stuff by hand and he just does an incredible job. And then I sent him the, um, my Sabenza and this knife, I love this knife. I've never felt like I got it sharp enough and it's got such a beautiful blade, such a nice hollow grind. It deserves to be super amazingly sharp. So I had him put a mirror edge on this. And um, at, at the risk of having it, uh, you know, get too slippery. But Jared assured me that S35 VN is still toothy enough as long as you don't go too mirrory. 
And to me, like, I don't need any more mirror than this. And, and I don't need mirror at all. I just wanted, uh, you know, just wanted that high polish and that super, super acute feeling. So thank you, Jared. You did a gorgeous knife on these uh, knife. You did a gorgeous knife on these, did a gorgeous job on these. And I'm really uh, happy to have these back in my, you know, I don't know. I'm not too big into carrying chip knives. So now, now that they're all fixed and super sharp, I love them. So thank you, sir. I thank you greatly. All right. So that does it for the state of the collection. Cause we've seen the, we've seen the work of Jared Neve. We've seen this crazy cool knife, the boon too. Um, so, Oh, Cody, I'm an Ohio guy and heard on your podcast that you're an Ohio native. What neck of the woods, Northeast Ohio is where I grew up. I'm not there anymore. Uh, but my, um, my brother and parents are, and, um, uh, I, you know, I go back a couple of times a year and I, I love it there. So who knows? Maybe someday we end up back there. Lavender pants. Good to have you. Speaking of Ohio late as usual. <laughs> hey, Barry, I have the Spyderco UK pen knife. Sometimes they call it UKPK with the new CTS BD one N. So that's extra nitrogen, I guess steel, which seems to hold an edge almost as long as S 30 V but strops up easily to a razor's edge. This is my favorite user steel. Huh, CTS BD1N, BD1N. Okay, so we talked about this maybe a year and a half ago when this came out. I, I feel like I remember hearing about this or reading about it. Um, seems logical, says Skagel makes some nice, nice Bowie knives. Yep, they're an offshoot of Bark River. Yes, Skagel, and they oftentimes have... Um, really unique uh, um, stag handles. Am I right? I think, I think I'm thinking of the, of the same maker. Lefty says, lavender pants, how dare you be late? You better not be looking at that, holding that F5.5. What is that? I know it's something I wish were mine probably. Oh, is that your new? I'm slowly caressing it, rubbing it with nurturing oils. Well, we don't want it to be unnurtured. That is for sure. Um, a couple of knives I, I, I want to talk about coming out. I want to see what you guys think of it. Hey, Dan Mitchell, good to have you here. Recommend budget, Mora Companion or Openel, high value. Mid, it was Cold Steel, American Lawman, great choice, but hard to find now. Hmm. Terrible choice. No, I'm just kidding. How about a Code 4? I know it's very, very different, but also very similar. And I think they're still hollow grind ground. Are they still hollow grinding the Code 4? Nice work, Jared. Really nice work. Uh, and people, you all know Jared is right here in the in the chat. So get get his digits, as we used to say, and uh, and you know, a hook hook up with him. And uh, his his sharpening is incredible. So go for it. Uh, okay, so uh, new not northeast, so Youngstown area. Yeah, um, outside of uh, outside of Cleveland, more more towards Cleveland. I'm from Southeast area of Ohio. Okay. So more towards, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're getting the lake effect right now. Big time. I, I had a friend, very good friend in high school who lived further away than my other friends, but only about maybe 40 minutes away. And he, he, their house was like right in the snow belt and our house wasn't. So, you know, we'd get, we'd get a foot of snow and he'd get three feet of snow. It was amazing. It just, just 40 minutes away. Hey, hey guys, uh, Shredder says we're late to the party. Well, hey, better late than never. And it's a party. Hey, uh, if you're just showing up, I know you love fixed blades. I just got this awesome boon too from it. Yeah, there you go. JRNeve at gmail.com. Hit him up. He'll, he'll do you some amazing uh, sharpening jobs. Uh, yeah. So uh, guys, this is the boon two by Bark River Knives. And uh, I was on a um, waiting list, not a waiting list. I was, I, this is something I pre-ordered. I've been uh, looking forward to this for quite some time. And uh, just a great old traditional American outdoors knife. So uh, the new knives I want to talk about uh, are uh, from Fox and from Kunwu. Oh, no, no, no. Put that back up, Jim. Jim had his don't take dull for an answer thing up. And I just want to show this. I just got a couple of these in. Jim designed these don't take dull for an answer t-shirts. 
and it's not just t-shirts it's hoodies it's man it's whatever you want yoga pants they'll put that logo on anything yeah you still use a mouse mouse pad you can get that you can get a, a, a hoodie um i think you can get a, a a tesla that says don't take dull for an answer on the side um a bell helicopter a anything you want really you can get definitely check it out go to uh, the knife junkie.com slash dull and then there's dull two dull two is for the black uh, black background like I just showed you and then slash dull is for the white stuff awesome stuff and then also we have the uh, the full logo like like that on t-shirts too so if you're interested check it out if you want to be the the coolest person on the block that's what you'll do all right uh, uh, so Fox knives lineup came out and I'm excited to talk about this for for a couple of reasons I like Fox knives they they make good knives and they're Italian and they have this, they have this cool thing about them. And I don't know. I, I just like them. And uh, they've made a number of knives that I'm crazy about, including this that I keep showing. And then also the 599 Karambit. And now, and, and now as officially announced uh, by them and their catalog, I'm going to close these Neve sharpened blades so I don't drop them on their tips. And... They have uh, come out with two knives by Ken Vihikite of Black Rock Knives, uh, a recent guest on the show and one of the few custom knives I own. Um, this is one of the knives that Fox is releasing called the Monkey Thumper. And it's going to, it will be like this, uh, but you know, a little, uh, this is custom. It That won't be. So this will, it's coming in N690 steel, you know, Bowler N690. And it won't have this texturing on it. That's kind of a custom touch, but it will be a flat ground. It also won't have the extra edge uh, on the on the swedge. That's also a custom touch. But everything else is like this. It's got uh, it's got the ring on the handle. It's got the the um, the same blade shape, same um, uh, weight, and same dimensions and ergonomics and you know just a, a production version of this i'm really excited for that because uh, a guy that i work with um when i gave gave this he's a, a dude that i show all my knives to because he likes knives and uh yeah, maybe he didn't realize how much until he met me but uh he has a past with knives and and he can appreciate a good knife and he cut himself drawing this one out and uh really cut himself badly um, and that made him fall in love with the knife evermore. I mean, he was already digging it and he kept putting it in, taking it out. I'm like, Hey man, uh, just be careful. Cause right there. And then that's when he's like, you know, cut, cut himself. So he wants this knife badly and he's definitely not getting a black rock custom. So when I told him Fox came out is coming out with their version, he flipped. So, uh, Jim, can we show him the, is there, did I have a picture of the, of the Fox version? That's a cool little thing too. That little EDC, I like that. So, so uh, let's see. I think I think we might be able to link to it. Yeah, Black Rock. Okay, Monkey Thumper. Yeah, click on the Monkey Thumper, Jim. Let's see what this looks like. I've seen some really beautiful promo pictures so far. Oh, this isn't a promo, but this is just a product shot. But I mean, look at that. Look at that. And that handle looks really sweet too. That's that's uh, micarta with some sort of a texture, and you know each one of uh, Ken's knives have have a different pattern, rock pattern on the handle. You know they're they're unique each one. He says they're like fingerprints. Um, so it's nice to see that Fox gave the micarta handle in their upcoming production version of that. They gave it a textural treatment. It's not just slabs of micarta. They scooped and beveled and chamfered and all that so i'm really excited about that not only so my buddy can get one but also for ken uh vihikite that he's that he's got this you know this deal with fox that's awesome that's that's you know he's he's a family man who's got kids and he's raising them on knife money so to get a deal with fox that's that's a nice addition to the knife money and i'm happy for him plus there's another cool one coming out of his design and it's a little tanto, not little, four and a half inches, but it's a tanto. Um, Ryu, it's called R Y U. 
Ryu is a Japanese word for what? I don't know, but I know it pops up in martial arts a lot. Um, Jim, can we uh, can we pop, put that in? I think it was in that same paragraph. Ah, oh, there it is. Look at that. He was on the spot. He was already doing it behind the scenes. Look at that. That is a that's a cool knife, man. I like that. I like it. Everything from the pointy skull crusher to the double finger choils to the jimping to that beautiful Quaken style blade. That is nice, man. So yeah, these two, and this one here looks like it's got Damasteel or Damascus um, and uh, like a marble carbon fiber, scalloped marble carbon fiber handle. And then it looks like it comes in, what, G10 and also uh, Micarta. Yeah. And oh man. So yeah, Kydex sheet, the whole works. So good on Ken Vihikite for landing a, an awesome uh, an awesome gig with Fox. They also have some other cool knives coming out, uh, but I didn't pay much attention to them. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're all nice. Lots of little little flippery things with Micarta that I like. Uh, next, I want to talk about Kunwu because they're one of those names that came out not too long ago, uh, you know, and kind of took everything for for a minute there people were were going crazy over it what was it what was that one called don't remember what that what those first they had two early models uh and i don't remember what they're called but anyway this is their new uh one that they're doing a kickstarter on and it is gorgeous uh uh it's called the dao t a o I, i'm i'm assuming it's dao like the dao de jing um front flipper i mean look at that Front flipper, but like the old, I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember this, but uh, people used to take, before they made the Boker Quaken, Burnley Quaken, before they started making a flipper, people would mod them by cutting away the back of the handle behind the pivot at an angle. So you could take the um, the tang, the, the lower portion of the tang of the knife, apply pressure to that and have it flip out. It was a, a cool little hack and a mod that people were doing. Um, this new knife by Kunwu has presents in that way. So, so you have a front flipper that you can slow roll out or flip out, whatever. But you also have a backside flipper in that in a in that little spine thing. Um, yeah. So they are well beyond their uh, ten thousand dollar goal on uh, on uh, what you call it Kickstarter. But uh, look at that. That's a pretty that's a pretty handsome knife there. I gotta say. So yeah, they're they're more than funded, I guess four times funded. But excuse me, their their goal was ten thousand and one dollar, and they're at forty two thousand and one hundred and forty eight dollars, and it goes to March. Oh, uh, thirty three days there, thirty three days left. Pretty cool. What do you all think of Kunwu? Have have you experienced these knives? Not these knives, obviously, but the. Uh, the others that came out, what was it last year? Interesting. Oh, look at that. Who is not a sucker for these 3D CAD drawings? Look at that. That's a nice, that's a nice looking knife. Who thinks that that look well, no, no. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say that. Yeah, I like that. I like that knife. <coughs> excuse me so those are the two i wanted to bring up this week that's m390 steel by the way the large is 3.54 inches and the smaller one is what is it uh 2.36 so that's like shard size i think shard the shard is right around there which one i don't know the uh, the pinkerton one all right well that does it for uh knife life news so any more recommendations for non-knife people I'd be interested in hearing before we get to this knife fight. And this knife fight is uh, apropos because we were just talking about ergonomics, handle ergonomics. And uh, there are two, I mean, if we're going to split it like this, Ronan, thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. And as does Jim, that is awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your generosity. Wow, that, that's cool. That means that someone would, would rather... I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. Uh, okay, so let's look look over here. We have, um, we have... We're talking ergonomics and handles. We're talking neutral grip versus heavily contoured grip. 
Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about during the knife fight. Monkey Thumper. I don't know. I feel about this. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the name. Yeah, it's 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 been the name for this for for a while. I mean, for ever since you know, for I guess ever since this model came out for the last couple of years, I've been watching Ken. Yeah, it's a name. You know, uh, at least it's not Talos. It's, <laughs> at least it's not the third Talos uh, or the MK the third MK Ultra. So Lavender Pants says Monkey Thumper sounds like a cute sounds more cutesy than horse crippler. <laughs> I like horse crippler. I like that. I like that. Um fear enabler. Hmm. Maybe. Um, I don't know. What do you think, guys? Uh, what do what do you prefer? Do you prefer the the neutral handle of this uh Bark River Knives Boon 2? Or do you prefer the very specialized shaped handle? Of something like this monkey thumper i'm curious because i vacillate personally and 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 where it comes into play mostly is in my um folding knife world so here you have the example as i was just showing the jared neve sharpened sabenza here you have like a pretty darn neutral handle that's about as well it's very very neutral and then you have where to go the uh, ZT0200, and that is not neutral. That is that is putting your hand in a position. You know, when you hold it, you're holding it like this. I mean, you can no, you can't even do that much. You're holding it like this, or you're holding it like this. You know, reverse grip. Not not you know, you're not doing too much other uh, other things. And I like both. I like to feel gently nestled in the uh, in the comforting handle of a of a big knife like that but i also like the freedom i like knowing that i can i can just step out and breathe the fresh air with this i like my mora handle to be honest yeah right i mean in a way it's like you know you, yeah it's like rubbery and plastic and and we have all these other awesome materials but really what feels good on the hand you know and and actually the the point is brought up a lot that well, maybe I should just start knife fighting here, but the point is, no, I'll wait. I'll, I'll keep save it for the save it for the mat, save it for the courtroom. Whew! All right, I got to admit it. I think I'm hitting a wall. So we're gonna get to this knife fight. If if there's anyone who would like to jump in, Ronan says my Mora Bushcraft Black is one of my most comfortable handles. Relatively cheap knife too. Yeah, I mean, like you look at it, and that's a pretty neutral style handle, but it, but it, it's got a little bit of a hump for your palm. It's got a little bit of a, a shape for your for your uh, fingers. But if you turned it around and used it in reverse grip for one of those chest pulls or whatever, all those different grips, it would just melt in perfectly. And then, if you listen to um, the likes of Ed Calderon, people who who have opinions about fighting with knives. Um, you know, he's, he says the more is the best fighting knife ever. He loves that knife. Excuse me. And he, he went up to the Mora booth at one of the knife shows, I don't know, several years ago and told them that. And they were like, you know, we don't need to be talking about using knives for, for knife fighting here. This is Mora. But he's like, yeah, but they're still outstanding. So uh, there you go. All right, let's, let's do this knife fight. Heavily sculpted handle versus neutral ergonomics. All right. Well, for this one, I am going to use the folders because I think the folders illustrate this case a little better. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having me at this esteemed uh, venue to talk about this very important topic, which is better. Heavily sculpted and contoured handles, such as this 0200 by, uh, by, um, designed by Ken Onion and produced by Zero Tolerance, or a neutral handle. I am here to argue for the heavily sculpted handle of this, uh, as an example, in this 0200. This knife locks open. What does that mean? That means this knife is intended for business. Uh, 
This knife is thick. It has thick titanium liners. It has thick G10. It has a thick blade. It is very stoutly built. What is it? It's a hard use knife. You want it to stay in your hand, okay? We have our hands, uh, our hands, our fingers can grip in this sort of flexible way for a reason. Because when we do, when we put our hands in a somewhat unnatural position and we grip, thank you, monster, and, and we grip in such a way that we allow the handle to hug our hand back. And that's why I think that the heavily sculpted handles are, are better. Because, um, you know, it's fine if you're talking about a slip joint, something you're going to pull out just to, you know, open up a letter. Yeah, neutral handle's fine, you know, because there's no real worry about it coming out through hard use. And But if you have something like this and it comes out of your hand while you're hard using it, you are up a creek. So really, uh, I think it shows confidence that the maker, you know, confidence in the maker that they know that this is going to be put to hard use. And I also think that it stands to reason that you would want a knife that grips your hand back. And that's exactly what a heavily sculpted and contoured handle does. I rest my case. Neutral handle. Great points, Bob. Ah, oh, really? Thanks, Wallaby. I appreciate that, man. That that must mean that must mean you're a good guy because I felt like that was that was a little gimmicky, the hugging back part. But th this is all parenthetical, so forget that it's happening. All right, here we go. Next neutral handle. All right, I will spare you the the pleasantries. I know you wanted me here for a reason, and that is my expertise. And my expertise is telling you that clearly a neutral handle like you find right here on this Jared Neve sharpened Sabenza made by Chris Reeve Knives is the ideal way, uh, ideal way to grip a knife. We were created on a hunting platform. We were created to throw sticks, to hunt. We were created to pick up sticks to use as tools. Our hands are evolved for sticks, not for things that hug you back. They were, they were designed to hold and throw and manipulate sticks. Well, I mean, is this not a stick-like handle in, in comparison to the heavily sculpted and contoured handle? I would say it is. I would say that if I'm being honest, this grip is very, very, very little different than this grip. As a matter of fact, they're almost about the same, except I can feel this protrusion. Um, but really, what does that mean? What does that tran translate into? That translates into the most useful tool for the most tasks. Um, that's what you're gonna get out of neutral ergonomics. If you are, um, if, if you're in a knife fight with a guy in a Kevlar vest, and you have the time and the wherewithal and the and the fine motor skills to get this heavily contoured and sculpted uh, knife open and in your hand and ready to use. Uh, well, if you can do that, then I guess you're a, you're a, you're a greater man than I. My my point is this, and I will wrap it right here. Um, the bio, the natural, the biological choice, the rational biological choice, I'm going to say it that way, is to choose the neutral handle. We do not spend lots of money on knives for limited purposes. We want tools that flex into many different roles. Therefore, the neutral handle is the superior handle. Scene, what do you think? I mean, I know who I uh, agree with. I'm late. What's up, everybody? Justin EDC. He's just in. Good to have you here, sir. I just finished the knife fight and I'm about to go to bed. That's what's up. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not just kidding, but I'm not about to go to bed. I don't mind a knife that hugs my hand. <laughs> yeah, I I don't either. You know what? I even like one that I can. Well, okay. I'm just going to leave that there. I, I like a knife that hugs my hand. I don't hate that grip. Uh, I have hands that grip themselves. My pry bar doesn't come out, <laughs> nor does my hammer roll. Neutral all day. That's, that is the perfect point. Yeah. 
yeah, you don't see pry bars or hammers with all these finger grooves and all that. I'm, I definitely prefer more of a neutral knife grip. Okay. All right. So, uh, Neve's t-shirts. I have, uh, I have hands that grip themselves. Yeah, that is your Neve's. Uh, Neve, that is your t-shirt. That's awesome. I have hands that grip themselves. I definitely prefer more of a neutral knife grip though. Yeah, 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 for sure. Here's, here's an interesting, um, contrast here. I'll, I'll put these under the knife cam. You got the, this contoured handle and this contoured handle, or I mean, and this neutral handle. Both are gentle. Let's see. This is uh they're they're both kind of gentle in their design. I mean, they're neutral, but they're rounded and they're this one is not too crazy. You definitely don't feel I don't feel like this is really shoving my hand in any position. Um it just kind of swells out in all the right places. Um same thing with this, but on I don't know. I don't know. I guess uh, aesthetically, I like this better. To to use, to have, and to hold, uh, I like this better. Yep. yep, that's it. That's my conclusion, and I'm sticking with it. All right, y'all. I, uh, I think that might be about it for me tonight. Uh, I'm glad everyone came. Ronan, thank you so much for your generosity tonight, sir. Like, that was greatly appreciated. Uh, I just finally scored a Sabenza 31. And the handle is so good. Made me fall in love with my 21 all over again. Is your 21, um, does it have micarta or inlays on it? Because this this handle just is so great with the inlays on it. And that 31, uh, the inlay on the 31 reminds me of like an old car, like a, like a 30s era car. I really like that. I definitely prefer more of a neutral. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to be, yeah, yeah, but I saw that comment. That's what I mean. Um, when are a bunch of us going to be on the show again? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. When are you going to come on the show? Uh, I, I do invite a, a guest host on every once in a while. I, it's been kind of uh, fun doing it like this, too. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I want to see some people. You all have phones. I know you all have phones. Uh, so just go to thenifejunkie.com slash join next week. And uh, hop on, man. Let me see what your face looks like and, and let us talk for a minute uh, face to face. Hey, Ben, great to have you. Uh, would a CRKT M16 count as a neutral grip? Yeah, it's got that curve down in the back. But overall, yeah, that's a very neutral grip. I have an M16, well, that big ass M16 in my car. And I, yeah, I move it around in my hands a lot. <coughs> neutral as hell. Uh, another great Thursday Night Knives. Thank you, Monster. I appreciate it, man. Um, thanks for coming. Wallaby. Good night, Bob and Jim. Another great live. Thank you, Wallaby. Thanks for thanks for showing up. It's always appreciated. Hey, David. My pleasure, man. Thanks for coming and thanks for hanging out. That's what this is all about. It's hanging out. It's saving those relationships. Uh, we all care here. No one out there cares. Uh, Chris says, thanks for another great show night, everybody. Good night, Blade Ogre. Take care, sir. It's true. They don't want to hear you talk about knives. We want to hear you talk about knives. Make sure you call the listener line 724-466-4487. Dan says, any grip that locks your hand is good. Uh, in for any, any grip that locks your hand in for safety. I can get with that. Oh, well, I mean, you know, you got the. the Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, 21s are plain Janes. And, oh, okay. And one black canvas micarta. Yeah, that's what this is, the black canvas micarta. I want to get a plain Jane. I love, I absolutely love all the snail trails, all the snail trails on this titanium and how it gets. So I'd like to get one of those. Thank you, guys. You're awesome, too. We love what you do over there at the Shredder Knife Reviews. Michael says, thanks, Bob and Jim. Thank you, sir. Thanks for Thanks for showing up to this pageant of cutlery. Pageant? Uh, ah, David, thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, as does Jim. I don't mean to always just say I. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Ah, see, and he's got a little... He's got a little one who's going to who's gonna grow up knowing about knives. Maybe not a knife junkie, but we'll see. Uh, love how Jared and Kara have Wednesday night. Bob and Jim have Thursday. Something to look forward during the week. 
Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Work, work us into your week. That's man. That's, that's, that's the best, uh, uh, endorsement ever. Semi, I'm sorry. Seems logical says good night. All good night. Uh, seems logical. Good night, Bob. Going to try to for work tomorrow, but it was more fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I am going to be tired for work tomorrow and you probably will too. And I think that's what you meant. Kurt Cromco. Good night, sir. It was great having you all here. And, uh, it was a, it was a fun way to end a long, long day. So I will leave it there for Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I am Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>